first thing we need to do is we need to write the relationship between the magnitudes of the classical and the relativistic momentum. So the relationship that forms here is three times the classical momentum, which is equal to the relativistic momentum. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to cancel the mvs on both sides so that we get 3 is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v over c squared. What we can go ahead and do next is you can take the reciprocal on both sides or another way of doing that is you can cross multiply and divide on both sides so that we get 1 over 3 is equal to the square root of 1 minus v over c squared. Next we'll want to square both sides so that we get 1 over 9 is equal to 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. Now we're going to isolate the velocity term so that we get v squared is equal to 8 over 9 times c squared. Next we'll take the square root on both sides so that we get the velocity is equal to 2 times the square root of 2 divided by 3 times the speed of light. Or if you want that in decimal, we can get 0.943 times the speed of light. Now part B asks, how would your result change if the particle were a proton? Now nowhere in this expression does it matter whether you have an electron or a proton because some major differences between the electron and the proton is the mass but the mass cancels out on both sides of the equation so if this were a proton none of the calculations would change so the result would stay consistent it would stay the same so the answer for part b is that the result is the same